spiritual. Some trust in chariots, others in horses, but I trust the one true God, the one who holds and molds my life. Some trust in chariots, others in horses, but I trust the one true God, the one who holds and molds my life. Enti, me ju wujo mi re, me ju wudi sa o ya dien yina su tum fo, o tum fo o ni mo bro hu fo, o bu cherry fu o do ya do su, nya mi be, nya mi ba, o nya ni pa nya se chin sa yem, me mfa ma distre ma weni, ma wuni mi ram mota, ey, me ju wujo e rati, me ju wudi a dien yina su tum fo, all power belongs to you, pa yi mo ti ya fu a wo ti a brave way, by fire, this prayer, unye ni panyen se chin sa ya menti, me mfa ma distre ma weni, ma wuni mi ram mota, every sa wa ya bido, wa ya bido nyame, wa ya bido nyame, ah, wudini ya ya bia fo, wudini ya ya bia fo nyame, wudini ya ya bia fo nyame, Lord, we are grateful, to be part of your church. It is by your grace and mercy that we are here. We pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, take over every aspect of this service and let your glory shine in the midst of your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We really thank God for today. He's giving us salvation. Granting us life and journey message to be here. At this very moment, on behalf of the chairman for the occasion, we want to sing some praises to glorify our living God. Amen.
want to express our gratitude unto you for your goodness and for your faithfulness, for your kindness and for your mercies. Who is like unto you, O God? Amongst all the gods, there is none like you. You reign, you rule in power and in majesty. And Lord, today we just want to say thank you for what you have done in this church, we say thank you. For what you have done through your servants and the family, we say thank you. And so Lord, we give you all the praise that you alone deserve. Receive our worship this afternoon. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen. Amen. And brought him this far. He's only the domain of the Lord. So, this is a song that our Papa himself requested as well. So, if you know it, join us. Amen.
So to also want to invite our dear brother, Elder Dan Akapo, to minister one song. Amen. Oh, I have tasted. Can you please give us a wave, wave, wave? Uh -huh. 
Kuna mimi na kwamba sasa kuna sasa mfua ewojukia. Amisha ina. Amongst us on the front row we have our dear father, uncle, brother, Apostle George Kwekukranchi and Mama Sue from London South. Amen. From London North area, we have Apostle Edmund Apia and Mama Comfort. So we will get a big welcome. We also have next to him Apostle Dr. Lord Elon Donko and Mama John Stanford. And the chairman's permission to let you know that he is the incoming in national. In our midst is our national secretary and area head for Milton Keynes area in the person of Apostle Kukufu Mbongwebu and Mama Apostia Mbongwebu. Also with us is Apostle Michael Tedeku and Mrs. Mbongwebu Tedeku in coming area head for Birmingham area. Amen. And for Manchester area, we have Apostle Abraham Arthur and Mama Rose Arthur. <laughs> and with us this afternoon is Apostle Retired E.K. Barabu, who is a boy. <laughs> we also have our National Finance Chairman in the person of Elder Adumako with us. We also have some national negative members amongst us. We welcome all of them to this occasion. Amen. Amen. Also with us is Apostle Dr. Ben Debra and Mama Bia Debra. We also have Apostle Prof. Kobi Kodia and Mama Bia. With us is our national head from Italy and the RCC coordinator, Apostle Amen. And coming all the way from the Holy Land. Yes. Yes, we will like in the land of God. Yes. It's our Apostle Raymond Ode and Mama. miss any of the apostles out. Thank you very much. And with us this afternoon too is our own papa, Amen. our own grandfather, our own uncle, Amen. our own brother, Amen. Apostle Osei Ousu. He will also be retiring soon, so with the chairman's permission, we say at going national, but it's not one year. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. And sharing this occasion, church, we have been blessed. Amen. Coming all the way from Ghana to play this occasion, is no other person but our father, our uncle, our brother, a member of the International Executive Council, and area head for Tichiman area. Apostle Isaac Nikote Jenner. Amen. So on this note, I would like to humbly take my seat and hand over the microphone for him to continue telling us the purpose of gathering and then minister the word of God.
father's will, it is the way the master went, should not the servant tread his tail. Go labor on, it's not for naught. The earthly loss is heavenly gain. Men heed thee, love thee, praise thee not, the master praises. What are men? Go labor on. Your hands are weak. Your knees, your knees are faint. Your souls cast out. Yet, false and not, the price you seek is near a kingdom and a crown. This afternoon we want to thank God and bless His holy name for giving us this opportunity to stand before this very honorable August, a beautiful congregation. We want to thank him for the traveling message that he has granted all of us, Eric Nyamiche, for in the midst of all the gallant soldiers choosing me, the youngest, smallest, to come and represent you. I want to thank you for that. And on this note, to also extend his greetings to all of you. Amen. My standing here means that the chairman would have wished to be here himself. But because he couldn't come, there was a need for him to nominate somebody to stand in his place. And that is why I am here. So that is what it means that the chairman himself would have wished to be here. So he sends his greetings to all of you. So does the international missions director also. Um, and then our general secretary also, Alexander Kumi Babi, his other executive council members. Tachiba, if you come to Ghana and you never come to Tachiba, you have lost a lot. At least you didn't come to Ghana. And those of you who come and you stop in Accra, Kumasi, you are missing a lot. Please come over to Tachiba. And that is where you will enjoy your life in Ghana. God bless all of you. On this note, I want to thank our dear national head, Apostle. I said we should free. I was telling those who were at the presentation yesterday that 2002 is being my father, he's been a mentor, he's been a friend, a close commandant. We have met at so many programs and shown up to us. It's very interesting. Oh, God bless you. It was an encouragement to me. Yes, it was an encouragement to me. I want to thank you. I don't take that for granted. I want to thank everybody here. If I want to mention one after the other, I think it will take the time for my sermon from uh, national head to the list of among the ministers. I think that if I want to mention one by one, my relationship with everybody here, you, they know it themselves, the pastors themselves know it. Almost everybody on this platform has posted me once or twice in your homes. No, no, Almost no. all of them. And so UK is my second home. Amen. Yes. UK is my second home. And I was saying that I have more friends in the UK than even in Ghana. Amen. Yes. So no, I'm, I'm very happy that I'm in your list. And I think that this is a home day. Amen. I've come home. And I think that this afternoon, by the time we close from this place, the Lord will have blessed all of us. Amen. Thank you for coming and thank you for giving me this platform. God bless you. I'm going to speak on the topic, the core. The core. Reading from Romans chapter 8, verse 30, I'm going to make a lot of scriptural references. So, um, but I think that. Uh, those of them, some of them will not be the day for me to 
project the call of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 13. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Amen. Amen. So God calls. And he calls us first into a general call, a general position in him. He calls us as his children. And the call that God gives us, this kind of calling is a summons from the king of the universe. He summons all of us. And these sermons, if you deny it, then you are heading towards your doom. Because even as we live in our depravity and live in our sinful nature, if you read from Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 1, he says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions. You were dead. And he says that we, we, we were, okay, I think it's there. Let's go. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Let's continue. Huh? In which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and, the, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So it made that way to were disobedient. And that is how. Apostle, prophet, whoever, all of us live and gratify the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. That was us. But God called us. And that call is still there for everyone who has not yet responded to it. If you are here, maybe because of the farewell service of our dear Apostle Sam and your family, and you have not surrendered your life to Jesus. I want to call your attention to that fact. Now, you can't deny this call to come to salvation. The call for you to surrender your life to Jesus. Because you are told if you don't have Jesus, and you do you, you, you will not have any headway without Jesus. I, I, I pray that if there is anyone among us here who has not given their lives to Jesus, today is the day of salvation. Amen. That you surrender your soul to him. Amen. And that he will call you in such a way that they respond in the saving faith. And that is the general call. God calls all of us. He calls all of us to come to him. He calls us. When we were in Botswana, I used to sing that song. Somebody's calling my name. Somebody's calling my name. Ruth, do you remember that song? Ruth, who labor and are heavy laden, and I who give you rest. Then he continues by saying that, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and and so when God calls people in this powerful way, He calls them out of darkness into His marvelous light. Hallelujah. And that is why we no longer belong to the dark world, but we belong to the light. He has called them out. Generally, all of us here, once you respond to the call of God, He takes you out of darkness and brings you into His marvelous light. If we read from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, in the first part of us as priests, we have been called, the call into his marvelous life. He also calls us into fellowship with his son. Because the call is to have the fellowship with him. And this fellowship is on daily basis, continually until we have left this world. Continue to live in fellowship. The Son of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. 
that fellowship with the Son. And it draws us into His kingdom that is glorious. That God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with the Son Jesus Christ, our Lord. The next point is that God draws us into His own kingdom and glory. Draws us into His kingdom. He calls us into his glory. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 12. He calls us into his kingdom. So we are no one in the kingdom of darkness. We are no one in the kingdom of the world. And he has called us into his own kingdom. Into the knowledge of his son. Hallelujah. Amen. And in this wise, we, are, we belong to Jesus. I am glad. And those of us who have been justified, he has glorified us. And in all this, to put it into one word, he has made us saints. We are saints of God. I'm cheerful. And that is why when Paul is writing his letters and epistles, he writes that to the saints in Colossae. The saints. To the saints of God. We are saints of God. We will not die before we become saints. We are saints here on earth. Romans chapter 1, verse 7. Romans 1, 7. We are saints of God. And have come into the realm of peace. He has given us peace. That face and their eyes, then they see more trouble. <laughs> Those of us who are chasing other people's wives. Each time we walked about, we looked around because we didn't know who was following us. We didn't know peace in that state of life. But when Jesus called us, he has given us peace. You walk about without looking left and right. You don't look around your shoulders. You have peace of mind. Even when you go in to sleep, you sleep very well. Praise the Lord. Isn't this beautiful? And why can't we give God every thanks and praise? He has given us freedom. Freedom in His Son. Reading from Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. And in this, we have hope in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians 1 18. He has given us hope. Even as I stand here, if I die today, I know I'm going to heaven. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> if I die today, I know where I'm going. Yeah. I'm not going. Yeah, recall, yeah, remember. Yeah, boy, I need that so much sorrow. Yeah, boy, I need that so much sorrow. Yeah, I have another world in view. I have another world in view. You see, my Savior is gone to prepare me a place. Yeah. Oh, my Savior. Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 4, 7. And then, in all this, for God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 4, 7. So, the world has turned around. But there is one thing and one joy in it. That those who live according to the word of God, the prophecy that came, Tells us that if we will give ourselves to him and if we will not compromise, he will use us. We are and this
adopt it. We enjoy it. We enjoy it. Because we know that if we will lead good lives, we will have peace in Him. And the joy of it is that it gives us eternal life. That life, that never in the lives, gives us eternal life. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. So be rest assured that if we will live for him, and if we will live in him, and live according to his precepts, according to his commands, according to his word, we have an eternal inheritance. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, fight a good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you have been called. So we have just not been called into anything, but called into eternal life. To which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Hallelujah. Amen. Now this gospel call goes forth through our preaching. And even as we preach, the word of God tells us that the calling from God came from the gospel. And that is why I want to reiterate that if there is somebody here who has not given their life to Jesus, so then you need to make that, that, that move. Give your life to him. Give your life to Jesus. Somebody is calling you. His name is Jesus. Jesus is calling you. He went to the cross for you. He died for you. He took away your sins. Just because he wants you to have eternal life. Jesus is calling you. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is why, beloved, in the Lord, it is very important for us to proclaim the gospel boldly. People are dying. Have the voice of Jesus calling. Who will wait today? Fill the light and have us ready. Who will bear the shells away? Loud and strong, the master calls. Who will go and wait today? That is why we should not relent in preaching the gospel. In season and out of season. The Paul says, I won't be dying to me if I don't preach the gospel. Wherever you are, your life should be an example to people so that they will see you. I see. And that is why the Bible says that we are the light of God. The light does is not put under the, a passion, but it is put up there so that it leads for all the people around the house. Wherever I am. And that is why the process in the nation's agenda is very important. Because when you are called, you are not called to go and sleep. You are called to him and sent back to the world from which he called you. And you possess every sphere of your jurisdiction. You are the salt of the world. Praise the Lord. Are you here with me? Are you following me? May the Lord bless you this afternoon. And may he grant you and I that grace the heart to continue to live with him. And you see, this call eventually comes with a change in heart. Our hearts are changed. If you read from Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 26, and it says, And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit, and I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Once this happens, the recipients as in the word of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, become a new creation. If this happens in your life, you become a new creation. And that is where you can be called a child of God and a Christian. The first time I set my eyes on Apostle Sam was in 2004. When we attended the Euro conference here, I, I can't remember, but I think just about four or five of them. That day, they, on the Sunday, there was an ordination. I don't remember those who ordained into the pastorate. 2004. You see that, huh? Yeah. Just a few of you. In that, I saw Apostle Sam. 
But I saw him to be very quiet. I saw him to be, excuse me to say, remote. He doesn't know me though. He is there. Quiet and the penny was So before then in 2002, Papa had met me and he had invited me and he said, Hey, my friend, I mean, so for him, I realized that I could. Then, lo and behold, the following year I was called into missions and sent to Botswana, 2005. Then we began going for council meetings. He got Then one day, we went to council meeting. And then when I entered, I was going to enter the room that I was allocated. I saw the name, James Kofi Sam. Look at I said, yeah. What are you saying? What are you saying? I don't know if you're better. So I was first to go. Then he came in the evening. And then the first thing he said, Good evening, my brother. And I said, I'm going to offer my brother. Good evening, brother. Or if you will refer to me as a brother, then I'll be a brother to you. So he slept quietly because it was late. Then in the morning, I mean, because he had come from the UK, he wasn't driving, but I was driving. I had been in Ghana, so when I went back, one elder had given me a bus, and I was driving. So I finished quickly, and I was waiting for others. We were about four around. So, so he finished and came and said, my brother, can I join? I said, oh, no, 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 come, come. You have to be so he joined me. We stopped. Yes. And so when his son was having a wedding, I never told him I'll come. I wanted to surprise him. And before he realized, I was at the wedding. So, my brother, you are here. I said, yes. <laughs> that is how it all started. You see, God expects us when he calls us. He calls us into his light. He calls us into being holy, righteous. And he calls us that we live together as brothers. In this general call, God is expecting that wherever we live, there is peace. His name shall be called great counselor. And what I'm driving at is he's called the priest of peace. Priest of peace. And that is why if you read from Romans chapter 12, verse 18, it tells us that as much as it depends on us. As much as it depends on us, we should live at peace with everyone. Brethren, ministers of God, sometimes we have certain upheavals, certain misunderstandings going on between us for nothing. For nothing. And we need for sure. So for me, could even be a sofa. Now that it's said. I will give you that. In confirming you, I'm not going to be full. I'm not going to be full.
to repent. Is it? So we have given way for charlatans because of the way we act. We have given way for charlatans to be in the gospel. To be people who, who, who come into the gospel for the sake of money, for the sake of fame, for, the, for advantage, the pretense, and all the deception. Because we who are God have not opened our eyes, we have given way for charlatans. <laughs> Are you called? Or are you a schemer? Are you a shatter? There are others who have become islands. Islands. Jesus said that in John chapter 10, from verse 11 to 13. He mentions that said people do not want to lay their lives for the floor, though they are leaders. They don't want to sacrifice for anything. So when they see a higher account, they will the floor and run. And, and Ezekiel chapter 34, uh, 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 can you take me to Ezekiel chapter 10? From verse 1 to 10. I see if I can read it fast. Highlands, people have been hired. So they don't care for the floor. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. What to you, shepherds of Israel? What to you, Israel? What to you, shepherds of Israel? Who are the kind of people who lose the Who only take care of yourselves? Should not the shepherds take care of the flock? Let's continue. We eat the cats, drink yourselves. The slaughter, the choice of animals, but you do not take care of the flow. Look at yourself. If you see yourself in this future, repent. You are not stretching the weak or heal the sick or bound up the injured. You are not brought back the stress or set for the loss. You have ruled their passion and put in the damage of the So they were started because of the ocean. And when they were started, they gave food for all the wild animals. She wanted to go all the mountains, but on every building, high hill, you scattered over the whole world. Therefore, you shall fulfill the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against the shepherds, and I will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tendering the flock so that the sheep can no longer fall. And the Jutrophes who sit in the church will not do anything, they will not want anyone to do anything. Let's not allow the highlands who look for only pay and reward, but the work we have neglected. In all this, God is looking for the call. The call. Among the, among the call, this call is a heavenly calling. Don't forget that. It's not earthly. 2 Timothy 1.10 Hebrews 3.1 It's a heavenly calling. But listen to me. This call also comes with an assignment. Every sofu has his assignment. Every elder has his assignment. But I remember when I was a Italian elder somewhere in my village. And I did my work. I was reviewed. And then one elder came. I mean, you know, you were done before the village and said, Hey, the mama, no. It is a, you know, you know, you know. Uh, I don't know if you have to use those words. He said, you know, you know, and, and, and don't think how how we do you know, you know. So when God tells you to go and do something, do it as you want to do it. As the Holy Spirit leads you, don't attack any personality. Don't against it. We have come with assignments. After all, Paul was to the Gentiles. Peter was to want to go and deliver the people of God. And that is what he did. At a point, Paul had to say that who is Apollos? Who is Peter? Because the people were doing comparison. And that is why you men that's true, when pastors are posted to you, stop making comparisons. But they will not do the same thing. They don't have the same time. Where's Christians that you went to meet them, then you, there was no need for you to go there. In conclusion, I think I have not finished, but let me finish soon. Because I time myself out by half time I should end, and it's out. 
I wanted to speak for only 45 minutes. And so I think I'll come to an end. By Apostle Saul. Saul in the Old Testament went on a journey looking for donkeys. And the Lord met him and called him. And made him, and made him king over his people. Saul in the New Testament also went looking for people to kill. And the Lord also met him and chained him and made him an apostle. You also left Ghana, you made the journey from Ghana for greener pastors. But the Lord also met you and called you a pastor and apostle for his church. Every journey has a purpose. When you were leaving the shores of Ghana, you thought that, ah, I'm going to come back. One more time. When you were leaving this week, one more time, welcome back. I'm going to come back. Knowing not that God was calling you into being a pastor. Being a pastor comes with suffering. It comes with challenges. It comes with opposition. People will rise against you. People will stop you. The things you have not done, they will say you have done. That is ministry. It is everywhere. But God has seen you through and today. You are coming to the end of your ministry. As you, mommy, and my children, lift your two hands and say, God, we thank you for seeing us through the hustle and bustle of ministry. No matter what you went through, the Lord God Almighty has brought you to a successful end. This is what matters. And that is what the Bible says the end of the matter is more important. God bless all of you. And I believe all of us here have been called by God. So we want to stand together and pray. We want to say something to the Lord. We want to say something to Him. If you don't mind, let's take up one of the songs that Apostle brought, which is, Let the beauty of Christ be seen in me. Let's take that and we'll sing it only once and then we will pray. And you want to help us to sing that? Let's of Jesus, we say. Our That's why you have sent this words to us. We are grateful. Together we have stood before you and repented. Please, Father, you are the only gracious God. You are the most merciful one. Please take our feet and rebuild us. Creating us a new heart, a new spirit indeed. Well, Lord, we will understand our callings and live out our callings wherever we are. Lead us, O oh Lord, to lead the flock that you have given us. Do your work in families. Do your work in marriages. Do your work in all institutions. And Lord, prove yourself in this land. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
After the song, you give them a wave, and then we'll sit down. So all districts, all the 10 districts in Manchester area, maybe now you go at the yellow up. Amen.
want to invite all as of Mamifu, all ministers and as of Mamifu.
With all humility, I would ask the apostle and mama Sam would rise on their feet as we go through this profile. And on record, Apostle and Mama Sam appear to be the last batch in the second generation of the ministers. The last in the second generation of the ministers picked from COP UK. We just say a big, big, big echo to them. Apostle James Kofisa was born on 17th of May 1957 at a Francie to the late Elder James Kwame Kumansa Sam and Dickness Abba Teria Sam. At 10, he accepted Christ. Family life. Apostle Sam married a very beautiful lady, as you can see, standing beside him. This is Agnes Sam on the 26th of September, 1987. They are blessed with four children and then also four grandchildren. After his elementary school, he attended Brema Esikuma Secondary School, popularly known as Bass. In 1972 to 1977, and pursued his A level at Winneba Secondary School, 1977 to 1979. He then went to University of Ghana, Legon, 1979 to 1983, where he graduated with BA degree in linguistics and Russian. So, it's an expert in Russia. <laughs> he attended Pushkin Institute in Moscow, Russia in 1982 for a diploma in Russian literature. He attended University of Helsinki as well from 1992 to 1993 for the postgraduate certificate in English. He's currently pursuing masters in applied theology in Regent Theological College. Employment. He taught English and literature at TI Ahmedia Secondary School from 1987 to 1989. He worked on secondments in Winneba District Council as lecturer officer from 1985 to 1986. He also moved from Ghana to Gambia where he taught English and literature at St. Joseph's High School in Banjul from 1989 to 1992. Amen. He then moved to United Kingdom in 1992 and worked as a counselor with Scottish Gospel Outreach from 1992 to 1997. Apostle and Mama have been instrumental in setting up of the following assemblies. Archway PIWC, Enfold PIWC, Enfold Akan, Reading PIWC, Reading Akan, Silvertown, Bracknell, Assembly, Harlow, Bentoak, Heston, Doncaster, Catherine, and Wigan. The opening of these assemblies also helped the setting up of the following district in Russia now Reading, Northwest now Wembley, Dagenham, and Harlem. Ministerial calling. He was called into the office of overseer in 2000. Between 2000 and 2003, and passed straight in 2003 to 2018 and was called into the office of Apostle in 2019 to present. Ferrying stations were, where our daddy have said, London of District from 2000 to 2006, Manchester District 2006 to 2007, Ireland as National Head and Missionary 
2007 to 2010. Morgan Kings District, 2010 to 2014. London South Area, 2014 to 2018. And Manchester Area, 2018 to present. Other appointments. He's been a district secretary for Aguna Shredo when he was in Ghana in 1984. District Assistant Evangelism Ministry Leader in Aguna Shredo in 1984. Presiding Elder Bunda Assembly in the Gambia from 1990 to 1992. District Secretary, the Church of Pentecost in the Gambia from 1990 to 1992. Adult Bible Studies Leader in the Gambia District, Evangelism Leader in the Gambia. Presiding Elder for two assemblies, all for them, eight months from 1988 to 1999. National Secretary from 1999 to 2004, and then also 2016 to 2020 as a member. Ministers and staff condition of service in 2003 chairman. Pensa patron 2005 to 2007. National Ministerial Committee member from 2006 to 2007 and from 2011 to date. National Executive Council member from 2011 to date. National Women's Ministry patron from 2012 to 2016. Also Chairman of the Pensions Board from 2011 to 2016. And also Chairman for the Monday Clinic from 2014. Amen. Amen. Of the presbytery for our dear also area of JKC. And this is from the ministers, and among all the ministers, I'm supposed to read five of the testimonies. So I went for apostles, pastors, overseers, those who were in and then those outside the United Kingdom. The first is from Apostle Abraham and this is Rose Arthur. Apostle James Sound is a fine minister of God and a great Bible teacher who has special grace for discovering potentials and mentoring others. He has a great sense of humor which creates a comfortable aura around him, thus making it easy for, work with, for working with him. <coughs> Apostle James Sound's love for his family is beautiful and exemplary. Rose and I, with Apostle and Mama Agnes Sound, and we wish them a blessed and fulfilling retirement. This is from Reverend Pastor Shelta Kunucho. Apostle Sam is a father and a teacher of the Word of God. He is prayerful, generous, understanding, and approachable. His sense of humor will greatly be missed. And this one is from Pastor Samuel Isia. Apostle Sam is a seasoned man of God and prayer. He makes the Word of God come alive and faith is lifted in you when you listen to him. He's got a great sense of humor and is a father to all. We wish Apostle Sam and Mama Agnes Sam the very best of the Lord in their retirement. The next is from Ovasia, Dr. Phil and Mrs. Bridget. The area executives can kindly join him. The area executives can kindly join him. My Lord, God Almighty, for this occasion. Uh, this is an occasion that we never thought to come that soon, but we give glory to his name. Apostle James Sam was transferred from London South area to Manchester area in August 2018 and has worked assiduously to build on the work of his predecessors, Apostle Osei Uzu, every year, who 
is now our national head. Apostle Francis Kofi Bonsu, Apostle Kwame Chumasi Apiabona, and Apostle George Kweku Kranchi, who were all magistrate area head in the past. It, and Apostle Kwesiotu. It is difficult to build our dear Apostle James Sam farewell on his retirement after such a wonderful time we have had with him and his family. Indeed, he is a father to all, a true apostle with excellent interpersonal relationship skills. He is sociable and friendly to the young and old and addresses every member by their name. Apostle James Sam is known by all to be time abiding and I believe every one of you here will attest to that fact. He will be seated in his seat even before the audience comes. And he will say, look, we will stick to the time. We are finishing at this time. And indeed, he does that perfectly well. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Apostle James Sam um, is always seated before the time of program and before most members arrive. He ensures the service is closed exactly or before the planned time, yet respecting the direction of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Apostle, Apostle's wife, which is Agnes Sam, makes him a complete servant of God. A true mother, an example of minister's wife. The, the Manchester area premise and the executive are here today, the 21st of August, 2022, to say, Apostle, well done. Mama, well done. I go, I go. I want to say your retirement will be full. Amen. So we want to So, with our pastor's permission, going to present the citation. I'll show it to them. That's left. And that is your availability. So this is what all the women in Manchester area came up with. Indeed, a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. We got to know Mama Agnes when we welcomed her and her family to Manchester area as our Man Manchester area head's wife. Mrs. Agnes Sam has been a mother to all the women in the area. Her immeasurable contribution to the area women's ministry has been one of the best. Her emphasis has always been for women to live the life of Christ, who is the perfect epitome of righteousness and holiness. Holiness, her humility, her words of wisdom and love for the things of God cannot be overemphasized. Mama Agnes, as we popularly call her, is a woman of God and was never selected irrespective of who you are in Christ. She really loves everyone equally, and she was approachable and friendly, always overflowing with smiles. She's a mother to the needy. Indeed, she's a woman who fears the Lord. She's a person who really appreciates the small things she receives and constantly falls 
to show appreciation and gratitude. Mommy will call you when you send her, no matter how little. Again, one day I I was just the thank yous were too much, and I said, "Hey, man, it's a who does it? A woman? The pia me does it, me does it. Nyamishramu, ma aye, what does it? Aye, that's the person we are talking about. She appreciates everything you do for her. She has been a mentor to many women in the ministry. Your deeds, humility, and laughter brightens the room, and your voice revives those who are lost in their thoughts. Let's put our hands together for the Lord and for the area we must to meet together. With the Apostle Evans' permission, we want to invite the new and RCC team to present a citation to our Papa and family. Thank you. I want to invite my coordinator and all the heads, area heads, national heads, to join us as we present a summary. So many things to say about you. There are so many things in our hearts to say about the work that you did within the Bureau of Love. But for the sake of time, you have printed this beautiful citation for yourself and Mrs. Agnes Sun. So on behalf of the Regional Coordinating Committee of Heads, we are presenting this beautiful citation to you in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Testimony of Apostle James Sam and family by the General Council. The General Council is the highest policy making body of the Church of Pentecost. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The reward of humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. I quoted from Proverbs 22, verses 1 and 4 from the English Standard Version, which was shortened. The General Council deems it a great privilege to testify concerning our dear colleague, Apostle James Sam, who is gracefully retiring today from the hustle and tussle of the active ministry of the Church of Pentecost. He served actively for 22 years. We give God all the glory. Called into the ministry in the year 2000, Apostle James Sam served in the following 2006 to 2010. Mr. Kings District from 2010 to 2014, London South from 2014 to 2018, and Manchester area from 2018 to 2022. As a good, as a good team player, he served as a member and sometimes as the chairman of several boards and committees in the church from 2011 to date. Also as national ministerial committee member from 2011 to date, pensions board chairman from 2011 to 2016, among several others. We observed Apostle James Sam as a man with a big heart and one with good human relations. His shepherding ministry was outstanding. This was evidenced in the way he related to all and sundry in a cordial and respectful manner. Together with his wife, they were constantly in touch with officers and members and took part in the social lives of officers and members. He exhibited passion and doctrinal consistency in the teaching and preaching of the Word of God. Thank you, Prof. But we also, with Apostle Church permission, want to invite to the platform the podium one more time, Elder Buffett Asante. 
that man always comes with good news. So, Sarasati Abba, you promised us that you'll be coming back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. I said I will be back, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to come back. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are here with me, just put up your hand with humility. How humility? All humility. Amen. 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 Good. I did tell you that I was going to be back. The first offering we gave was tithes and offering, as we all know. It is Thanks and adoration to God our Father for bringing us this far. Before I say a word or two, I would want Mama to thank all the congregation, the leadership of the church, after which I will say some few words. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Holiness. Virtuous ladies, men, youth, high, high children, we give thanks first and foremost to the Almighty God for His faithfulness and goodness to us and for His protection and power to keep us until now. May his name be praised forever, amen. amen. 22 years ago, God called us into the full-time ministry and we, we gladly accepted it, his calling with joy and happiness. We put all our trust in him and as his word says, there is no disappointment for anyone who puts his trust in him. And surely he has not disappointed us. Hallelujah. We give thanks to the International Executive Council, the National Executives, and the Area Council for their guidance and support throughout these years of service. We have enjoyed healthy relationships with all of the people we fellowshiped with, both at locals, district, area, and the national levels. As we bring our active service to an end today in Manchester area, we want to thank all the members in all the districts we served in, from Tottenham to Manchester, Republic of Ireland, Great Milton Kings, <laughs> London South Area, and Greater Manchester Area. Special thanks and appreciation also goes to all the officers we work with at the district and area levels. May God reward them with heavenly blessings. Amen. Indeed, everything God used us to do during our 22 years of service was due to our co due to your cooperation support and guidance and the encouragement we received from all of you we say god bless you Amen. we from the bottom of our hearts render sincere thanks to you for your love your gifts and counsel May our good God reward you spiritually and physically for all that you did for us. Amen. Amen. We wish we could have done more 
but this way the Lord has brought us. Ebenezer, hallelujah. Amen. Anything that has a beginning has an end. And today is the end of our active ministry. Amen. To God be the glory, hallelujah. Amen. We cannot forget to appreciate all the national heads we work with in United Kingdom. We say, God bless you. Again, we want to appreciate and thank all our predecessors in Manchester area. We want to bless God for their hard work and pray that God will continue to bless them. Amen. Amen. For all the ministers and their wives, we want to thank and bless you from the bottom of our hearts for your kind support and friendship. We say God richly bless you. Many people have traveled long distances to come and support us. Because of time, we cannot mention your names one by one, but may God richly bless you and reward you for your love and support. Amen. Amen. We will continue to pray for you wherever we go. And we also ask that you continue to pray for us. And this is also the time to appreciate our children. The work of God demands constant travels and many other duties. This takes you away from your family most of the time. But in all this, our children had to understand and support us in all areas of our ministry so that we could finish the work of God has given us. We want to thank them and appreciate them. May God continue to reward them and increase them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Lord. Thank you, Mama. Um, I would also quickly, because of time, um, go through some names. Uh, what happens is this. Anything the Lord does for you, you have to be careful to appreciate and give thanks. And today, many people don't know why we are crying. We are very happy for one reason. I've seen the faithfulness of God. I've spoken about the faithfulness of God. And today, when I see, when the church started, the church started in Manchester, in Mami Hannes' house, two other women. We were four when we started this church. But the God who was able to multiply Abraham, this God has today made sure we see what we see. He is a faithful God. Amen. And he will be faithful unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. We would want to um, thank even our parents who have gone to be with the Lord for the way they brought us up in the way of the Lord. Spiritually, we have spiritual fathers who have guided and helped us. But to start with them, I would have to start with the International Executive Council. To see the International Executive Council sending somebody to represent the chairman and all of them is something we can never take for granted. So we want to thank first the chairman, the three principal leaders, the general secretary, the IMD, and all the executive council for honoring us by sending their representative to us. I would also want to appreciate chairman in person. Yesterday, despite his busy schedule, he had to call me, James, I just want to see your preparation. I want to know how things are going. And I was so surprised, I told him, Chairman, 
I am on the way to the presentation service. He said, I am interested in knowing what you are doing, how you are going about. And I was so much excited. One thing I like about this chairman is that when you see him, you see Jesus Christ. This man is a talent spotter. Blessed in all ways. When you go to council meeting and he enters the room, all of a sudden the atmosphere changes. The hand of God is on this man. And I would urge you, as we go to sit at the back benches, support him. Amen. And you would see the glory of God. I would also want to make mention of a chairman to me who accepted me into his family, me and all my children. He has accepted us into his family. For some reasons he couldn't come, but I have to appreciate him. Appreciate Apostle Jesiado, the Middle past IMD for his love. He wanted to come, but again it has coincided with another program. Apostle Sapo was my spiritual father, my goodness. What a man of God. He is going to be with the Lord, but Mama Sapon is alive. And I pray blessing from God to be on Mama Sapon for what the father and the husband and she did for us in ministry. We have also seen our Papa retired Apostle Barabu. When I met him at Nottingham, he said, James, he thought I'm too young to be on pension. People say, why are you going on pension? People go on pension when they are old. Then I will tell them, no, not all pensioners are old. <laughs> so it's time for me to go. And um, I want to thank him for being here. I extend another thanks to the Vice Chancellor, Professor Kodia, for traveling with the wife to join us at this meeting. Also, I would want to appreciate the RCC Acting Coordinator, Apostle Ajman Tebi and Mama, for availing yourselves at this meeting. The National Head, Apostle Asai, Osi Afriyehum, I have worked with for so long. This 22 years, I came to meet him in ministry. The district used to be only two, London North and London South. And today we thank God for what we see. We want to appreciate him and the wife for their support. As we also bring all the national executive members into board, as we appreciate them, from the national secretary who took over from me, the love he continues to show to everyone, the national deacon. I'll be coming to some people. Some people have become part of me. Because of the work of God, sometimes we need to travel. And just as it has been said, when I was living for Ireland, when you have never been on mission, you don't have much experience. But when you are going on mission and your children are young, and then they have been brought up here, and then they fear even spiders. And when they see a spider, they will call you where you are. <laughs> then you would know that you are on missions. But when I was on missions, specific elders here, Elder Dr. Amwaka, and then Elder Isaac Nisin, helped me a lot. I had much support too from Elder Adumako, who has become a real brother, not a friend, a real brother. May God bless all of them. Then again, we would want to appreciate the area executives one by one, making mention of the area deacon and then the area secretary for their unflinching support to us. Mama has thanked our children and appreciated them. But before I come to Mama, this man who preached, <laughs> because of that, I only want to talk about him. He's been a wonderful man of God with Mama Mary. The love that they show, the way they are able to accommodate people, 
my mama was bereaved. Apostle was in Tamale. He never told me he was going to attend the funeral. But in Ghana, whenever you are bereaved, the children go there around two to three to weep before the funeral starts. We were at that place trying to weep myself. <laughs> We saw some light flashing. Who could this man be? We have come here to cry secretly. Who is coming here this time? Not knowing Apostle had traveled all the way from Tamale. And then on arriving at Sweden Room, was looking for the place where the funeral was going to take place. And he didn't know we were inside that place trying to cry. So he had to continue all the way to the mission house. He is a man who is a genuine Christian. And just as Apostle Lord said, the message that he brought is so powerful. We need to examine ourselves and see whether we are diverted from the way the Lord wants us to go. Apostle and Mama, God richly bless you. Apostle Lubrachu has been very helpful Elder uh, Mason, I saw him around. God bless you. And Mama Sam, I'm ending because of time. When she was growing up, the father called her Sophobia, which means a female pastor. So when I met her, and then I spoke to her concerning marriage, she told me, I want to marry a Pentecost pastor. <laughs> I said, Pentecost pastor? Then I laughed. Because I knew within myself I am one. <laughs> but when God calls you, you know it. And lo and behold, she has been very, very helpful. You can't get any woman who is more understanding, who is more hardworking, who is more respectful. Mama would want all people to live in peace and at peace with one another. She's a woman sometimes, when the news in Ukraine, whenever she is coming into the room and then the news are so hot, I would have to switch off the television because she will leave what she is cooking and come and cry. <laughs> She's so moved. Why is the uh, uh, president doing this to innocent? people. And Mama is a woman of the way. Most of the messages I preach are through the discussions that we have. And I said it's the same. Because the Holy Spirit works in all of us. I want to appreciate her and then thank her for being very supportive, being very helpful, very She has prepared food and mama saves and saves all people. Mama, God bless you Amen. for your hard work and may you live a long life. Amen. Let me mention my elder sister who couldn't come. Mama Apostle, uh, Apostle Lenin's wife. My sister is married to Apostle Lenin. And still many people get confused. Many people think Apostle Lenin is mama's brother. So they will tell me, your brother-in-law, mama's brother, no, let me correct you because this is the last day. <laughs> Apostle Renin is married rather to my elder sister. They are now watching us by uh, Zoom, no, by YouTube. And they are worried because the visa system delayed them so much that they couldn't come. But talking about Apostle Lenin and my sister, I have never had a brother-in-law and a sister who is like them. When I go to Ghana, my sister and Apostle Lenin treat me like you are with us physically, you are with us spiritually. May God bless you and reward you for all your kind support. And may you live to be a hundred. 
God bless you all. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for how far he has brought us. I think I have to add my voice to the conclusion that Apostle Sam has just made as regards our mommy Grace Amy. She called me yesterday and wanted me to mention that uh, she wanted to come and couldn't come, so she extends her greetings to you. She called me, and so I was sure able to do that in my concluding uh, message to the house. So did uh, Prophet Joe Amaniando also call to say that he sends his greetings to you. And they want me to congratulate you on your retirement. So God bless you. Though you have said it, but it's my duty to do that. Because I have been specifically asked to do it, and I have to do it. Thank you, and God bless. Beloved in the Lord, uh, we are almost closing. We're going to pray for our father and our mommy, and I have the honor to invite my daddy. Uh, you see, I, I didn't want to talk so much. Uh, Apostle E.K. Barabo retired, was called in the north of Ghana. Why? In those days, my parents were also in Tamale, and he used to be a, 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 a service personnel. I think police or something. Yes, and he used to come and pay tight in Tamale from Wa. And yeah, and our house is just close to the church. Yes, so I used to see you so much, and before we could realize, you were called into the ministry, and you were gone, and all that others followed. I'm privileged to have you here. And I want you to say the prayer, concluding prayer, over Apostle and the family. So please, we'll go together and then the Apostles will follow us as we all stand. your name this afternoon. Some years ago, you have given us Apostle Sam and Mama Agnes Sam. They have been called into the ministry 22 years ago. You took them over mountains and across valleys. They crossed rivers and they crossed deserts also. They saw hardships and they saw short times also. But you ask God, because you're almighty God, you've been able to see them through all these things. Yes. Through happy times and hard times also. Father, we thank you. Amen. We bless you for their lives. Yes. And that we use them in the active ministry. Father, their words have blessed people. And they have been able to, to build people also. We bless you in that regard. Today, you are seeing them off the active ministry and opening a new chapter in their life. Father Lord, we thank you for that. Amen. But we need you in their present situation also. They are retiring as they retire graciously from active ministry. Let them retire, but not get tired. We pray that Lord our God, you give them new visions for this chapter of their life. Continue to use them. Although they are on retirement, there is a way you can use retired people also. Let them excel in that also. Father, if they lack something during their 22 years of ministry, 
and if they have lost anything, strength, spiritual or physical, at this moment we will replace them for them. When, when this body ages, there are pains and difficulties in the body. But with you in control, they will have good health. Amen. We pray that you grant them good health. Amen. Father, grant them good health. Amen. So that whatever they stand to minister, they will minister as retired, strong people. Yes. Father, Lord, open heavens for them. Yes. Amen. Be their provider. Yes. Yes. Whenever they need something, even if they have not asked you, for a provider. Let them not be wanting any digits. People will sit there and say that ah, these three time people are in want. No, we know that with you things like that and will not happen. Continue to bless your people. Grant them the wisdom. Grant them the knowledge to be able to, to package this life of us too. Grant them the vision. For retirement, so that as they live retired life, Father, they will not be wanting anything and anything at all. Father, I pray for the family, the whole family, both the nuclear family and the extended family. Bless them also. Let them continue to support them in, in everything they are doing. Let them continue, continue to be obedient. Let them continue to listen to you. Father, if there are any good things that we have to ask, and we are not able to ask for them, grant it so that their retirement years shall be prosperous. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, he, he was able to keep it from falling. That means God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But he bless you and keep you now and evermore. Amen. Amen. of the Church of Pentecost, I present to you this certificate. The Church of Pentecost Certificate of Service. This certificate is given without alteration or erasure of any kind. Then, of Officer, Apostle James Kofi Sam. Position Hello, area head, UK, period of service from 2000 to 2022. And the inscription after all this is well done. Signed <laughs> by Apostle Eric Gamiche Chairman and Apostle Emmanuel Ajimambe Queen, and International Missions Director on August 21, 2022. Amen. Amen. Let's please observe. Hey, shall we be absent then? When we walk, Father, we are very grateful to you 
for all what you have done. May your name be glorified. Amen. You are a loving God. Yes. You are a gracious God. Yes. You are a powerful God. Yes. When you call, you don't fail. Yes. When you call our brother, you promise him. And you have fulfilled all your promises. And today we are seeing all this because we are serving a faithful God. Amen. Father, we want to bless you Amen. for what you have done in their lives and in the Church of Pentecost in UK. Amen. To you alone be glory, honor, and majesty. Amen. We also want to thank you for how you led us to organize such a wonderful program. You started with us. And you have ended well with us. We say, Lord, thank you. Amen. As we leave this auditorium, we pray, Lord, that you continue to lead your people who came from far and near Amen. to their various homes peacefully, Amen. safely, Amen. without any problem. Amen. And your name will continually be glorified. Amen. We thank you for all what you have done and will continue to do. We want to bless you for everything that has happened here. You led us through and you have ended well with us. May your name be magnified, be glorified in the name of Jesus. And we also want to say, bless your people who were part and parcel of the ministry of our brother and our elderly minister. Those who gave him water to drink. Those who gave him counsel. Those who supported him in various ways. As they live active ministry. May your blessings be upon them all. Amen. We bless you. And we thank you. In Jesus name. And now. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with you today and forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.